Hey YouTube World Harvest, there's plenty. Thanks for stopping by to check out the video. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button for me. So guys, um, I saw this individual, he was sharing a prophetic message that he said God gave to him. I listened to it and I thought I would bring it to your attention and share it with you as well. Um, please seek confirmation from God, pray about it to see if it sits right with you and your spirit. Uh, because it wasn't my dream personally. So, um, but I still want to share it with you guys. Again, please get your house in order. You know, we hear a lot of talk about what's going on with Russia and the Ukraine and NATO, um, and also the geopolitical conflicts in the Middle East with Israel and all their surrounding neighbors. I think a surprise is coming for many people. Um, as I said before, they must get things accomplished by December 31st of this year in order to move forth with their plans for 2025 is event sequence driven and uh their time is short so they're going to pull out all stops and go forward famine is coming please make sure you prep get your medical stuff together your security plans your food your water also something i always talked about and stressed is make sure you know your neighbors you don't have to be best friends with them at least you know on a first name at least a speaking ba uh, speaking basis because when the power goes out, best believe people who do not have any food or water or anything, they will go out looking for it. And your neighborhood may become a target. And you cannot stand out there and pull security by yourself. You have to sleep and rest at some, time, at some point in time. Strength is in numbers. And we'll get into that in another video that's coming down the line. But let me share with you this prophetic uh, warning and video. May you enjoy it, and until my next video, may the good Lord continue to bless you and your family. Greetings. Once again, I come to you to bring you a message from God. And this message is going to be, well, it's kind of different, but it's not different. Because every message that I've given you so far has been a pro prophetic message from God. But this one is more prophetic in the way that God is showing me, God has shown me a glimpse into the near future. And it's a glimpse that he showed me so I can warn his people and get them prepared for the times to come. God says there's, there's coming a time where there's going to be a time of lean. And if you don't, if you don't know what that means, um, time of lean is where we're living on, we're living off the bare minimum of the land. Is there's no more fat left? There's no more. It's not plenteous anymore. Time, the the food, the resources, the money, everything has become scarce. Everything has become lean. And he he gave me this in a dream yesterday. He show he showed me where there was going to be a shortage of food in the land. At first he showed me where there was a, an abundance of food, where we were just eating to our heart's content, just overindulging. Our plates were full. Then suddenly, it, it, it's like at the drop of a hat, at the flip of a switch, our plates went from full to barely having anything on them. It was scarce. And in that dream, I went to add more to my plate, or not not my plate, but I went to add more to the plate of other uh, plates of others, and I was not permitted to do so. I was under a strict penalty if I would add more to the plates of others, and I was being watched like closely. And in that, in that dream, people were begging for me to add more to that plate because I was, I was serving, I was serving people. I was, I was serving, serving the people, fixing their plates. I was in control of portioning of the food. And me personally, if you, if you know me personally, you know that I love to cook. I went to culinary school. Uh, the chef, the aspiring to be a chef and all that. And cooking is my passion. I love to cook for people. I love to see their faces happy when they eat a good meal that I cook. So in that dream, that bothered me that I couldn't give people the food that they wanted, the food that I prepared, and I couldn't give it to them. But when I awoke from that dream, God told me 
that 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 what that dream meant. He said, scarce times are coming. We're gonna be living in a time of lean. Food is not gonna be readily available anymore. It's not gonna be as abundant as it was. He said, people, it's gonna be pretty much a chaotic scene where people will be fighting in the streets for food. People will rob, steal, and kill for food and resources. He's like, this, this is gonna be a serious time. And then he took me, he immediately put the scripture or he, he showed me the story of Joseph in, in the book of Genesis. And that story was playing out in my head. So I go to my Bible and I start reading and these scriptures stu stuck out to me. It come from Genesis chapter 41, starting at verses, uh, starting at verse 28. Now, to preface this, the Pharaoh had had a dream, and in that dream, um, none of his uh, magicians could discern, I mean, interpret the dream. None of them could tell him what it meant. But in that dream, he saw seven kind coming up out of the river. They were, and they were fat. They were fat flesh. They were, they were robust, full body. But then, after that, he saw seven more kind coming up out of the river that were ill ill favored and that look that looked poor that looked almost dead and they devoured the fat flesh kind but after devouring them they didn't gain any weight they didn't gain their countenance didn't change any, nothing changed about them they still looked the same so this dream perplexed um the pharaoh and none of his magicians could figure it out and interpret it but there was one of his officers who remembered Joseph, who had interpreted his dream for him. And he told Pharaoh, I know of this Hebrew who interpreted my dream and he can interpret your dream. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph. So this is where we pick up in verse 28. <clears throat> and Joseph says, this is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do he shows unto Pharaoh, behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall not be, be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. So, jo Joseph goes on to explain that the, the seven fat flesh kind were the seven years of plenty that they were going to be living off of. But the seven ill-favored kind were the seven years of famine that were to follow and what and when they when those seven ill favored kind devoured the fat flesh kind that was symbolic of the famine taking over the land and eating up all the years of plenty there were there would be no sign of the plenteous years because the famine would be so great and grievous in the land and joseph said Joseph told Pharaoh, God gave you this dream twice to establish that it, it was to happen soon. So when I got that dream from God yesterday, that wasn't the first dream of which uh, such like I had. I had another dream previous to that. And this dream yesterday gave me clarity to the dream before that. So God said soon there is going to be there's going to be a, a time in the land in this land where we live where things are going to be scarce so he he didn't give me this message to scare his people and to put them in fear but he gave me this message as a warning for his people so that you may prepare for, like just like he gave pharaoh time to prepare he's giving me this message for you also that you all have time to prepare for these this time of famine that you can stock up what you need that you can prepare what you need, that you can make sure your house is ready, you can make sure your household 
is secure. Now, <clears throat> God also showed me where it's going to be hard to go out and get buy food and buy the resources you need because the shelves in the grocery stores are not going to be stocked. Where they're going to be stocked, but not regularly. There's going to be maybe weeks in between time where you can get certain items because they're not going to be stocked readily. He also showed me that the prices of things would be so high that when they are in stock, that only a few would be able to afford to buy those things. So he's saying prepare now while things are at a reasonable price. And I know in this, in this, in this time we're in now, we're seeing a rise in prices and everything. But these price, the rise in prices that we're seeing now is nothing compared to the prices that are to come. So get what you need, medical supplies, um, toiletries, household supplies, food. Don't get foods that's going to that's gonna spoil. Like if, if, if we have a situation where we're without power, just like we, we've been having outages lately, power outages, system outages, that could, that could happen at any time. So get dry goods, like beans, get canned goods, things that you can put in, put in your pantry and shelves and that can last for years. It may not be what you're used to eating. It may not be what you want to eat. It may not be the best of what's, to, what's offered, but we're talking about a time where there's not going to be much available to choose from. So you at least want to have something to choose from rather than nothing. <clears throat> and also, for those people who who have home gardens, I'm like, you're, you're already a step ahead of, ahead of everyone else because you're supplying yourself with things you need. But you got to make sure you take care of those gardens and you got to make sure that you grow things that are in season because we know the seasons change and as the seasons change certain things are not viable certain certain fruits vegetables certain produce are not viable in certain seasons so study up on your um your produce study what's um what's good to grow in the summer what's good to grow in the fall and make sure you have it, everything ready and available and make sure you study up on What's what's ready good to grow in the winter? Like there there are certain things that you can grow in cold weather, and there are certain things that you can't grow in cold weather. There, are, most things do well and flourish in warm weather, but there are a few things that you can um, grow in cold weather. And on top of that, you can make greenhouses. A greenhouse would go a long way. It would take what little sunlight we do get in the cold months and ampli amplify that and make let you be able to grow um produce like it's summer and spring <clears throat> and you ask why why do i say um garden and grow your grow your own produce and store your own produce i was led to that by scripture also god um gave me the um, scripture in uh, ezekiel chapter 47 um Verse 12, let me see. I have that here. Ezekiel 47, um, verse 12. It says, And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to its months, because their waters they, they issued out of the sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. And God gave me that scripture. And, he, and when he gave me that scripture, I asked him what he meant by that. He said, he, this, this, those scriptures were for those who are believers in him, who are believers in Christ. And he said, those believers in Christ, Christ is that river. And he said, Christ is the water. He like no matter how how the situation may look, things may there may be times where you look like you can't grow anything. Your land looks barren, but he said as long as you believe in him and as long as you are following him, Christ will be the water for your for your um, produce. 
So plant your gardens, he said, because you're going to live off of that. That's going to be meat for you. And he said, the, the fruit will be meat for you. And he said, the leaves, the leaves will be medicine for you. And that's another thing he gave me. Medicine is going to be a hard to come by medicine. They're going to be out of medicine is going to be out of stock too. If you can, if you can look and see now, a lot of people are already stocking up on medicine. So people know things. Something is about to happen because a lot of medicines are going out of stock. But God said He gave us natural medicine. It's the food that we eat. He said the leaves of the of the uh, fruit shall be for medicine. So it's good to get a little book, a little guide to study which foods provide what nutrients for you, what vitamins, what minerals. Because th that's all medicine is. Medicine is supplying your body with vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that it needs to naturally sustain itself. So you need to look up the, the vital nutrients that your body needs to survive and regulate itself every day then research what foods will will give you that what natural foods grown will give you that and those are the things that i think you should be growing in your gardens it's not for me this is a message from god like i've known about food being medicine for a while i i grow i've had gardens and grew gardens for a while using food as not just something to eat, but as natural remedies. I can tell you for, uh, one thing for sure right now. <clears throat> if you're growing herbs, one herb you want to grow is oregano. Oregano is a natural immune system booster. A lot of people don't know that. Make sure you have oregano, fresh oregano. You can grow your own. You can go to Home Depot or Lowe's or even in Kroger, they have oregano plants that you can buy and you can go and transfer them to your home garden. You can start a small garden and grow your, uh, have a um, herb garden. But that is all I have for you. I hope this message finds you well and I hope you heed this message in this warning. God bless you and until next time, peace out.